Hello, and welcome to How to Find Lots of Oyster Mushrooms, a step-by-step -step guide. If you learn and follow the steps in this tutorial, you too may be able to find lots of oyster mushrooms. Let's get started. The common oyster mushroom, Pleurotus austriatus, needs moisture to produce its fruiting bodies. Six to seven days is an ideal time frame, although this may vary based on your location, time of year, and local weather conditions. Oyster mushrooms feed on the decomposing wood of hardwood trees. Try to find a forest with mature, softer hardwoods, such as beeches, maples, and tulip poplars. Although the oyster mushroom can fruit on more rot-resistant wood, such as oaks, they will not do so as readily or as plentifully. When choosing a pathway through the forest, choose one with an expansive view of the surrounding woodlands. A hilltop or ridge top overlooking a creek bed or river bed will be particularly advantageous in helping you find lots of oyster mushrooms. Scan the forest for fallen trees that still retain their bark. Trees that have fallen one to three years ago may be a good host for the oyster mushroom, particularly those softer hardwoods such as maples, beeches, and tulip poplars. Once you have located a fallen tree, look on the tree for large white kidney-shaped bracket fungus, such as Tremetes esculi or the lumpy bracket, Tremetes gibbosa. These large white bracket fungi are highly visible from far away and often fruit in large groups. They are a good indicator that there will probably be oyster mushrooms on that very same log. Once you have found a fallen tree with large white bracket fungi, approach the tree and investigate it for oyster mushrooms. This concludes the steps in our step-by-step -step guide. Now let's put these steps into practice by executing them in the field. It has been seven days since the last heavy rainfall and I have located a mature deciduous forest. I've gotten high on the ridge top and I've chosen a pathway along the ridge top with a good view of the creek bed below and both sides of the ravine. Now I will scan these areas for fallen trees with large white bracket fungi. Okay, I have observed a fallen tree with large white bracket fungi below in the creek bed. Now I will go investigate. I have made my way down to the tree, viewed from above. I can now see a number of Tremetes kibosa lumpy bracket fungi on what appears to be a fallen maple tree. This area has lots of fallen wood. One particularly large tree which has fallen and broken into many pieces. 
Now let's investigate for oyster mushrooms. Yes, indeed, there is quite a number of oyster mushrooms. You can see just how many oyster mushrooms are on this tree. And here you will notice the lumpy bracket on both of these trees with all of these oyster mushrooms. You can see that this method was effective. If you follow the step-by-step -step guide, you too may be able to find lots of oyster mushrooms. An area with multiple downed trees and broken branches is the best place to look for oyster mushrooms. A tree containing the mycelium of the oyster mushroom that falls and breaks into several pieces will effectively create multiple individual organisms, each fruiting independently. In addition, if acceptable new host wood falls nearby, it will quickly be colonized by the oyster mushroom as it fruits and spreads its spores. These are the best places to find lots of oyster mushrooms. Now let's go back up to the ridge top, repeat the steps, putting them through their paces to see if once again we can successfully find lots of oyster mushrooms. Okay, I have observed another fallen tree with large white bracket fungi in the creek bed. In this case, it is a large fallen beech tree. Now I will approach the tree and investigate it for oyster mushrooms. There are many Trimedes bracket fungi on this log. and they are also accompanied by oyster mushrooms. Pleurotus austriatus can have a cap color that is tan, white, or even grayish. The gills will be white to cream. The stem will be short and off center with the gills partially running down it. They can fruit singly, but more often in clusters and large groupings. And they can fruit on sticks as small as two inches in diameter, but are more likely to be found on larger trees. These are what older dried up oyster mushrooms look like, indicating that there was a large fruiting of oyster mushrooms here several weeks ago. Unlike many mushrooms, oyster mushrooms can be found at any time of the year. So you may return to a tree where you have found oyster mushrooms over and over again. By repeating the steps in this guide, you too can find lots and lots of oyster mushrooms.
Okay, I've observed another tree with large white bracket fungus. Let's go down and investigate. And indeed, in this third example, we also found oyster mushrooms. This concludes how to find lots of oyster mushrooms, a step-by-step -step guide. I hope you too in the future can use these steps to find oyster mushrooms. I'll see you next time on Mushroom Journeys.